Welcome back. An hour and 21 minutes, and Justine Enenarden has won her second Grand Slam championship of this year. And she adds the US Open title to her French Open title in quite breathtaking fashion, given the scenario that she found herself in from last night's match against Jennifer Capriati. Enen Arden spent the night on a drip, pretty much. Many people thought that she wouldn't be able to come out to compete as she did. The only person who believed that she could do that was the woman herself. Kim Kleist has had her chances. She had two set points in the first set, but how well Justine Enen Arden fought to take her second slam of the year. Barry Cowan joins me here in the studio. Barry, <laughs> you've got to hand it to Enen Arden. Enormous heart. I think that's really was the difference between the two players, especially in the first set. Justine Arden struggled. You know, she lost a few games. Kim Kleist was on a roll, but sheer heart and determination. Once she got that first set, she showed the class that she is in a player and really just steamrolled Kleist in the second set. And that's, that's a sign of a player and a Grand Slam champion. When you get the lead, you capitalise on it. And it's something that Kleist just couldn't do in the first set. It was almost as if that semi-final against Jennifer Capriati had just warmed up Enenard then. I mean, she produced her best right in the final match. Well, it's, you know, it's very similar to Roger Ferrer at Wimbledon, you know, Grand Slam champions, players that, that can produce, you know, produce it on the biggest stage. And unfortunately for Kleister, she didn't do it. But fortunately for Justine Enenard then, again, she produced it like she did in the French Open. Kleister's took the defeat to admirably, smiled and gave Venon Arden a couple of kisses on uh, either cheek. But it must be a, a dagger in the heart for the world number one. She must have thought that this was her moment to win a Grand Slam without the Williams sisters in the way. Well, it's very disappointing for Kleister. She's played exceptional tennis all, all, all the two weeks, played six great matches. But really, I think what she's got to really learn from this match is to be a little more selective in the joy of emotion there from Justine Arden. That's sheer hard work over the winter with her trainer, Pat Etcheberry, obviously a coach as well, and she's been through a tough time, Justine Nen and Arden. And that's where the sort of emotion, you can let the emotion out when you win the biggest prize of all. The backhand as well for Nen and Arden was at its, its best, like pretty much her whole game was. I mean, it did so much damage, it wreaked havoc as far as the Kleister's defences were concerned. Oh, it's a glorious shot, it really is. She's, it's a shot, actually, she's able to generate power from two feet behind the baseline, also inside the court. But the pleasing thing for me, for her, to, for, for Justine Enen Arden today, was she was moving through the ball on the back end. First round against Capros, it was, she was holding back a little bit, but the confidence, confidence she's had with the wins, she was able to really dominate Kleister's, especially in that second set. Mm. Do you think people will say, well, she won it, but the Williams sisters weren't there? I suppose in 20 years' time, nobody will really look in the history books and say, well, the Williams sisters weren't there that year. I hope not. She's beaten who was there, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who could have been, um, who, who she beat, who she lost to, uh, or sorry, who, who could she have lost to. The fact is, she was there, she was seeded to, she, she won her seven matches. And she won them in style, and no one will forget her semi-final against Capriati, when, when Capriati was really the, be the better player, but sheer heart, determination, um, brought her through that match, and also really got her through the early exchanges in the final. And you have to say that she, she's, out of the two Belgians, um, she's the one who's been able to cope with the extreme pressure when it's really counted. Don't worry, by the way, we will go back uh, live to Flushing Meadows for the uh, trophy uh, ceremony. We're just uh, waiting a few minutes here. We're anticipating the uh, ceremony to start fairly shortly. The uh, host broadcasts on one of their uh, long breaks, but it looks like we uh, might get underway fairly shortly. And it will be quite a moment for Justine Enenarden, her first US Open title. More to come, I'm sure, for Kim Kleister's no doubt distraught. She must have thought that this could well be her year. players just being uh, ushered out to where the uh, trophies will be presented. Still the world number one for you, Kim Plasters, with that defeat. She would have validated her number one position if she had have won this evening, but now? I don't think so. Andre Agassi said before the tournament, to win one Grand Slam is great, to win two is exceptional, you, and that's what Justine Enenard then has done. Thank you, ladies and OK, gentlemen. let's join the trophy ceremony.
And to wrap up this championship, a deserving hand for these two tenacious competitors. tonight the country of Belgium watching it's 4 a.m. what a wake-up call for them there they not only have the champion they have the runner-up it's now my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the board and the president of the United States Tennis Association Alan Schwartz Alan Thanks, Dick. I think our umbrellas have gotten a better workout than we expected this week, but we certainly ended up with another sensational U.S. Open. For the last two weeks, these two super athletes, Kim and Justine, have competed with singular focus to reach the finals and then to try to win the tournament. And they deserve the highest accolades as they are champions, both of them. We wish to thank J.P. Morgan Chase, our valued sponsor, and you, our wonderful fans, who have once again shown that the world's best tennis fans are here in New York. excellent support we got from three mayors, Michael Blumberg, David Dinkins, and Ed Koch, all of whom watched this match. Also a thanks to Alan Kantarian and his staff for the handling of the challenges presented by this very rainy last week. On behalf of the USTA, I would like to first congratulate Kim Kleisters, who this final without the loss of a single set. And our congratulations also, obviously, to our winner, Justine Enin Hardan, whose backhand any of us would trade anything for. It's just magnificent. And congratulations. We think she was absolutely remarkable the way she handled a three-hour match last night, came back today, and showed us what she has. Kim, please step forward and receive your award. Alan. And for your high accomplishment, you will also receive $500,000 in prize money. We made the comment, uh, Kim, during the telecast that the pressure was not only to win this major prize, a Grand Slam title, but to be really the number one in your own country. And you know your opponent so very well, and you too had to be impressed by what you had to play against tonight. Definitely, I think um, Justine just played a great match today, and, and I think she was too good. And uh, especially, um, you know, beating Jennifer last night, which, which was probably the best match of, of the of the whole year, and uh, that I've seen. So, um, um, and, and I knew it was going to be very tough out there, but I, I felt you know comfortable getting into the match, and um, 
you know, playing really well against, you know, my pre previous opponents and maybe, you know, not good enough today. Well, you've been gracious in victory and defeat. We'll see you next year, I trust. Yeah, definitely. Um, Kim Kleister, she'll be back. And now it's my pleasure to present the chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan, Chase Bill Harrison. Thank you, Dick. It's nice to be here. J.P. Morgan Chase is very proud of its long association and relationship with women's tennis, and we are very pleased to sponsor the women's championship here during the last two weeks. It's been a challenging two weeks because of the weather, but nonetheless, we've had some incredible, courageous tennis. We've had very, very patient and wonderful fans. Thank you very much. And, and we have once again seen the great beauty and excitement and fun of the U.S. Open in the greatest city in the world. It was, it was 35 years ago that the first U.S. Open was played, and the women's champion's prize money was $6,000. Women's tennis has made remarkable progress, as well as women's athletics overall, as evidenced by, as evidenced by the champion's check tonight for $1 million. And I, I am very pleased and honored to present this check to a new champion, a great champion, and a champion that has as much heart as anybody I've seen in a long time. Congratulations, Christine. A wonderful tournament. Thanks. Bring that envelope close. Congratulations, champion. The United States Open champion, Justine Anna Arden. How did you do it? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's a it was yesterday. It was a great fight against Jennifer, and I didn't know how I was going to play uh, tonight, but I was feeling good on the court. I just want to congratulate Kim. She did a great tournament, and uh, it's been two terrific weeks. I mean, uh, you know, with the rain and everything, I want to thank all the people who worked so hard for making this tournament a great event. And you've been fantastic, the crowd. Thank you so much. And you've been a great champion. Belgium can't wait to greet both of you on your return. Congratulations, our 2003 U.S. Open champion. Now it's time to present the 2003 U.S. Open singles champion, this great moment of silver, the Grand Slam trophy to Justine Anna Ardan. Justine Ennard-Den holds the US Open Women's Trophy aloft for 2003. It's been some two weeks for Belgium's uh, number two. We'll take uh, a short break. When we come back, we'll have some final thoughts. Women look great in black, but not if their antiperspirant leaves white marks. Like some antiperspirants, New Shore Crystal contains Clearex, so it's unbeatable at minimizing white marks.
The KFC Family Feast, only $9.99. Sneakums, lend me some money to buy Leicester Square. Too late, Mum. Bought it this morning. Monopoly, a nice, ruthless, money-hungry family game. Welcome back, Justine Enenar Dennis, this year's US Open champion. Her first title under the lights at Flushing Meadows. Some moments for Justine. NNR Den. Those will be the pictures that will appear in the papers in the morning. And I'm sure half of Belgium have been up through the night watching this encounter. An all Belgian final, the first in US Open history. And it's gone the way of Justine NNR Den. I don't think she'll want to let that trophy go for quite a while, but Justin N. R. Dennis, this year's US Open champion for 2003 in quite breathtaking fashion, Barry Cowan. Nobody really thought she'd have the energy to come out to compete the way that she did. Well, I think if you look at the merits and the performance of the two players uh, leading into today's match, I think I, th I thought Kim Kleisters has played better standard tennis, but when you've got the matchup like today, it's all about who produces, who produces when it really matters. And Justine Nenin Arden had that little bit extra. She saved a couple of set points, 6-5, with a big serve, with a courageous shot to get her out of trouble. And that was probably really the difference. She did need that perfect start, though, Justine Nenin Arden, considering yeah. the match she had against Capriati. It was so vital that she got off to a good start, and she did. Well, we were looking very anxiously to see how she'd react after her exertions last night. Kim Kleiss has started poorly, but... Full credit to Justine Henning Arden. She made lots of balls. She made Kim Kleister's play, but she also was was attacking the ball. That was that was good to see. She wasn't just defensive, waiting for Kim Kleister to miss. She was also she was also alert to seize the opportunity, and that that's also a sign that a player is fresh. It's a player that hasn't has recovered totally from um, her match yesterday. Kept incredible depth as well, right the way through. And I think that was one of the reasons why, why she came out on top, because the depth that she was keeping was forcing Kleisters to drop it short, and then Arden could capitalise from there. Well, quite a lot of the time, Kim Kleisters, especially in the first set, was actually attacking Enin Arden. Enin Arden is a great athlete. She was retrieving. But the, re the reason she was able to hang in the rally, as you say, was, was keeping good length, good shots, not necessarily hard, making Kim Kleisters play that extra shot, play that extra shot, and in the end, Kim Kleisters was the one who was breaking down. So I think, I think tactically very astute from uh, Justine Enin Arden all night. There was a period in the first set where Kleisters finally found her range, and, and there we, was, we were sitting here thinking, OK, well, it looks more and more as if Kleisters is, is pulling herself together and is going to come out on top. I think if you look at the two, in terms of ball striking, I think Kim Kleisters is a better player. But it's not all about being able to strike the ball. But this is an illustration when Kleisters is full of confidence and he's feeling good, the, the power and, and the weapons that she has, hitting well off both wings and flat as well, and, t and taking a risk. And that is a sensational forehand outside the court, playing off her, off her outside leg. Fantastic balance. It really is. Exceptional shot. Does this, in some ways, put question marks over Kim Kleister's big game temperament? It's always going to, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, players like Kim Kleister, players like Justine Enin Arden, players in the men's draw, you're judged when it really matters. And unfortunately, she has failed this year. In the semi-final Australia, she folded. She didn't produce her best performance in the French Open final. And I don't think she's produced her best performance today. I think she was very gracious in defeat, saying Justine Nenin Arden was a better player. But I think when she goes back to the locker room, she'll look at her own performance. And she won't be totally satisfied. But she's a down-to-earth girl. I think she's only 21. I think she can learn from it. That's the important thing. Not to be too downhearted. Take it, take it with a positive. Try and learn from that and come back in 2004 with a bang. Mm. And Arden's backhand, the best single-hander in the women's game, and it, it wreaked havoc uh, in the Kleister's defences this evening. No doubt about it. Without a shadow of a doubt, it is an exceptional shot. And for, a, for a small girl, she's able to generate a lot of power, really from anywhere on the court. But again, it, it's interesting to see um, sort of the match-up, the, the way players are rallying. And there's that backhand, beautiful, taking it on the rise. 
we'll see in the, in a minute this this shot taking it on the rise but it's that first yard it's that mm. step after she's hit the ball she's moving forward and that always helps with the power because you, you'd be able to generate the power that's coming from the body as well and also again an illustration of the depth that Kleister's was lacking yeah, and then I then was moving her around working her working her out side to side and then once the short ball came she was right on top of it. I think what happened with Kim Kleister was the first set, she was the dominant one, but she was the one making unforced errors. I think possibly at the second set, she realised, well, I've got to change my game, but she actually went the total reverse, and I felt she was a little bit negative, and that's when Justine Henning Arden realised it and was more aggressive. How many times do you see sometimes when that happens and the other player becomes negative and we get a match where no one really wants to do anything with the ball? So again, a good realisation under extreme pressure, 20, 23,000 people, a Grand Slam uh, uh, crown at stake, should I say, for Justine Henn and Ardennes. She was able to, in extreme pressure, be able to uh, change her game in the beginning of the second set and really stamp her authority. The double break for Henn and uh, was crucial, not just to continue the momentum, but also to give her an insurance break in the second set. You need that, because you're going to get nervous. If you're serving one break up, everyone will get nervous, especially in the US Open final. But this just shows the class that Justine Henn and Arden. I don't care, men or women, to try that shot and to be able to execute it the way she did shows that the girl has a lot of ability and a lot of talent. Mm. Also, I mean, people go on about her heart, and possibly her heart was what won on the match yesterday and what got her through um, her first set. But you've also got to have an abundance of talent as well. The rankings will say that Kleist is the world number one, but, but surely now that Henn Arden has won two of the four majors this year, she has to be the top dog come the end of the year, surely. Even if rankings say, say that Kim Kleist is number one, for me, I think you have to put Justine Henning Arden above her. She's won two Grand Slams, two out of the four, and that's a remarkable effort. So I think Justine Henning Arden will take number two in the world with two Grand Slams. And also as well, I suppose, when the Williams sisters come back in, they'll, they will also have a point to prove, which makes the women's game all the more fascinating. They won't like it sitting at home, will they, in the States, thinking two Belgians in the final. They, they would have wanted to have the two Williamses in the final, the US Open. So th they'll be working hard, you would have thought, on the off-season and trying to resurrect that at the start of 2004 and maybe going for all four slams with them in the final. Mm -hmm. Belgium as a whole being rather spoiled at the moment, aren't they? <laughs> lucky, aren't they? It's, they're very um, lucky to be in a position where, they, where they've got two world-class players. And, of course, they, they've got the Federation Cup to look forward to later on in the year. Um, which will be an interesting matchup, and you have to say, on current form, maybe those two players might lift the crown for Belgium. Mm, of course, you'll be able to see the uh, Fed Cup semi-finals uh, with us here live uh, on Sky Sports uh, a little bit later on in the year in uh, in November. Uh, we'll also be live for the uh, men's singles final. The time, 9 o'clock this evening, 9 p.m., Sky Sports 1. Juan Carlos Rey against uh, Andy Roddick. Both men looking for their first ever U.S. Open title. It should be some evening from Flushing Meadows. My thanks uh, to Barry Cannon. He'll be back uh, for the men's final. So, Super Saturday complete, and it's resulted in a night to remember for Justine and N. Arden. Good night. She's looking at you You get lost within her eyes She has hypnotized you
And you can read David Attenborough's broadcasting memoirs in this BBC book, Life on Air. They're the only friends I've got. No one else will be my friend. It's tough not having any friends that care for me. Because I've never met anyone with restricted growth, I've never, like, come in contact. So whenever I've switched on the TV, it's quite a shock when I... I'm 39 something. years old. And what life have I had? No. My life surrounds drink. From everyday life comes one life, a new series of moving, revealing, but uplifting stories. Starts 24th September on BBC One. This is BBC Two, where you can make your mark on history. The time has come to make that choice as you decide which historic building has a future. Let's join Griff Rees jones live at the Tower of London for the final of Restoration. We made it. Welcome to the final of Restoration. Mm -hmm. 